plasma membrane. The plasma membrane, or also known as the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer, and the fluid mosaic model, is the structure that surrounds a cell on the outside. It controls what enters and it controls what exits the cell. Every cell has a plasma membrane and every organelle is surrounded by one. Without the plasma membrane, the contents of the cell would not work as a system. Think of it like the bouncer at a concert. The bouncer, like this membrane, chooses who enters and who leaves the show so that it runs smoothly. What's cool about the structure of a plasma membrane is that it requires every organic macromolecule that your body consumes and produces. This includes lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and cholesterol. Let's review the key terms in the structure of a plasma membrane as it directly relates to its function. The plasma membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer. A phospholipid is a long, nonpolar, hydrocarbon fat tail made of carbons and hydrogens bonded together, along with a polar head. This polar head is made of phosphorus and oxygen atoms. The polar head is called hydrophilic. And this word comes from the root hydro, meaning water, and philo, meaning love of. So this part of a phospholipid is water loving. The tail, however, these long hydrophobic tails are nonpolar. Think of fat or oil not liking water. So they are called hydrophobic because anyone who has a phobia of something fears it. So this is water fearing. These phospholipids um, are arranged in what's called a bilayer, meaning two layers. And they are specifically arranged tail to tail. Because cells live in an aqueous environment, meaning surrounded by water, it's nice to have these polar heads, okay, pointing to the outside. Okay, it just works that way. The water surrounding the cell is attracted to these polar heads while the lipids okay, oppose the forces in the water and therefore fear it and head towards the center as you can see here. So we've gone over phospholipid bilayer and hydrophobic versus hydrophilic. Let's talk about transport proteins for a second. Transport proteins um, are used for structure and for transporting substances primarily in and out of the cell. This happens through active and passive transport depending on the substance um, and is an important way to get substances especially that are large or charged in and out of the cell. We can talk about this more in other videos about um, active and tr passive transport. Carbohydrates are these chains of simple sugars that sort of flag other cells. They serve as a major uh, point of intercellular communication of talking with other cells so that they can work together. Finally, cholesterol. Cholesterol are these structures here embedded in these nonpolar regions of the uh, phospholipid bilayer and they help with the extremes of fluidity. So carbohydrates help with communication, transport proteins help with transport, and cholesterol helps with just the wave-like structure that these phospholipids um, form in. They need to be able to move fluidly when animal cells are moving around, but they also don't want to get too stuck or, um, or too fluid, excuse me, um, 
because it, they might fall apart in cold um, temperatures. So cholesterol helps make the membrane um, just the right amount of fluidity. And the last term for the video, the fluid mosaic model. The fluid mosaic model is yet another term for the plasma membrane. Um, and it is called this because the individual phospholipids are all surrounded by, again, like we said, this watery environment. And so hence, it's very fluid. And it's considered a mosaic because it, of all of these varied components, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the cholesterol, um, and of course, these phospholipids. So just imagine apples bobbing on water. These components of the plasma membrane all move in this bilayer, um, simply held by intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. And they move in the sea of what is like the consistency of olive oil is well described as a fluid mosaic.